In our household, I tend to be the one that's overly optimistic. This bike is a good example of that. First off, I thought it was an Ellsworth or a Marin or something like that. Turns out it was neither. It was a Super Go, at least in the US. That's what it was. So if you haven't seen the previous two videos that I did on this bike, go ahead and check them out. This last little bit, this disassembly was in the last video, but maybe not all of you have seen that. So I'm sharing it here and giving you a little update on what's going on. I picked up this bike. One, it was labeled as an Ellsworth, or at least had Ellsworth stickers on it. It's kind of a hodgepodge of everything. It took me a bit to sort it out. It was with the help of many subscribers who we were able to narrow down exactly what it was. Like I mentioned, a Super Go Access. But it was also sold to other companies and was branded as those. It's basically a Taiwanese bike, branded and labeled with whatever you want. So it made for the perfect 90s aluminum mountain bike frame to build up as an old shovel bike. So with it all stripped down, weighed in at four pounds, it was time to do a restoration or at least build it up. And I wanted to build it with really just with parts I had around. I didn't want to put a whole lot of extra into this. So we'll be building it up after we do a custom paint job. And this begins act two of this resto build. First, it's removing these stickers, which a lot of you said when I did the Kona build that I should have used a hairdryer on those stickers. Well, the Kona stickers were underneath a layer of clear coat. I didn't even try, but I just assumed it wouldn't work. Now these stickers are on the surface and really I'm not sure how much the hairdryer helped. In fact, with the Ellsworth stickers, I just stopped using it. They peeled off just fine, especially without gloves on. Now, this is where we get to my optimism. It was Friday night, and I'm thinking, I'm doing this vlogging thing about this bike. Maybe I can just get the paint done tonight. <laughs> that was the beginning of my optimism. First, I hadn't really thought about the fact that I'm gonna have to clean this frame up quite a bit. With the Kona, that took quite a while. And with this one, just removing all the little bits that need to be removed and cleaning up the dirt and grit it took a while and then I needed to scuff up the paint I didn't want to remove it all but there's all kinds of dings and gouges and dents and nicks that this frame's seen over the years and really to prep it for this pre-coat not only did I need to sand it, but I also wanted to fill in all those nicks and bits and scratches, especially on the yoke of the chain stay. It was pretty beat up. Probably part of the reason why there was an anti-suck guard on it originally. I don't know, maybe one of the previous owners was really bad at adjusting his derailleur and just kept getting his chain stuck in there. I don't know, maybe after I ride it, I'll find out that maybe it's something with the geometry, I don't know. But I decided to fill in all the nicks and bits and this gouging from the chain with just this Bondo fill. To mark off all the bits on this, I'm trying out this frog tape. I wanna maximize my ability to mask out things. And I don't wanna just do a single color on this frame like I did with the Kona. 
And really this gets again to my optimism. So with the Kona, I used the spray.bike paint spray, which isn't cheap. This one, I was at Lowe's and saw that, that citrus green Krylon paint and thought, I want that color. It's cheap, inexpensive, like, I think it's under four bucks a can. And though the primer's fine, this yellow was really runny. It was really hard to get a coat that didn't start to run a little bit. And it just, I don't know, didn't win me over. I was maybe a little too optimistic, but I did want to compare between regular spray paint and the spray dot bike. I highly recommend the spray dot bike spray. This bike also gave me a chance to test out one of my new purchases, which is a Cricut um, like vinyl sticker printer thing, which actually buying that was, was kind of a fun experience in Joanne Fabrics. Um, one, you're like one of the few guys when you're in Joanne's. That most of the guys that are in there are in there against their will. Um, but uh, I actually asked some of the ladies there that were shopping for vinyl sticker stuff for their crickets, um, some advice on things and what I should be picking up. And they seemed to think that that was one, funny, and enjoyed helping out the, the lone man in, in Joanne Fabrics. But it's actually neat to be able to print vinyl stickers and using them here to mask off the paint is the, is the goal. Although as soon as I stuck that blue on, this vinyl is like non-permanent blue vinyl stickers. And uh, I really like the color. So back to my optimism. One, I wanted to use three colors on here. The white, the citrus green, and a black. And what I found, even though I let uh, a couple hours between different colors and coats, which was recommended on the paint, both the white and the black, and then later the clear coat, when I applied them, started interacting with the yellow, or the, sorry, the citrus green. And the quality of this paint just really isn't quite at the same level as the spray dot bike paint. For this frame, it was okay. This frame really didn't mean a lot to me. Um, this is more just for fun and an experiment, and kind of a, just messing around with painting and masking. I haven't done this as much. I'm not a professional. The quality of the results were not that great. In fact, with this black paint, when I peeled the paint off and the vinyl stickers, it, it was okay. But really, it kind of left something to be desired. The edges, sometimes the black paint pulled off. It didn't fasten as well as I would have liked. Because of that, I printed some more blue vinyl stickers, this with a permanent color, a little lighter blue than the masking, and decided to cover up what I had masked before with the blue. And I kind of like having that fourth color, that blue kind of completed it a little more anyway. But really, the main reason for doing that was the paint. 
And this now brings me to act three of the bike. Now that the paint is done, I let it dry really well. 48 hours is what was recommended before you start really doing other things. And now we're into the build. And the build for me has always been somewhat of a Zen type activity. Some of you guys mentioned this when I mentioned this on my Kona build, that for you it was the same. I love putting bikes together. And this bike went together great. It felt good, things went smooth. And it kind of made up for the <laughs> less than ideal situation with the paint. Kind of calmed me down, made me feel a little better. Putting these old parts on this old frame with a new paint job was fun.
So as I wrap up this bike, <laughs> I guess it's not bad that I'm an optimist. It was fun discovering what this bike was, where it came from. It was kind of a bummer that it wasn't an Ellsworth, but I thought all along it might not be. It was fun that I had the chance to build up a frame that I could brand as my own with without anyone getting all worked up like you get sometimes on these videos. And although the paint wasn't perfect, it was a good opportunity to learn. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm new at this. And overall, it was fun to give this old bike new life. It wasn't bad to start out with. Now it's something new, something different. So, look for opportunities to give those old things new life. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Ciao.